Have you ever been wrongfully accused of something in your life? Well, I have, and for something that has always been one of my biggest fears. This new generation seems rather scary. I mean, girls are aggressive and boys are getting timid. I'm not saying any of these are wrong, but as I watch them screaming over something that isn't even logical, I miss the old sensible generation where one could sit down and have a nice, friendly conversation. Honestly, I blame social media and the internet. It's ruining people. A family doesn't even talk amongst themselves anymore, and a couple where they are always chatting using this weird internet language. But when they are together, they do nothing but stay on the social media all the time. I'm the kind of guy who if you judge by the age is a Gen Z, but nothing about me belongs to any of these people. I'm sometimes feeling like an old man stuck in a young person's body just because of my thoughts, not anything else. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, my biggest fear is getting accused of something, especially by a girl. You see, today's modern feminists who do not know what actual feminism is about and when the movement started, modern feminists can lie and blame you for crimes you never committed, which is something we all, whether male or female, should be scared of. The pro-life and pro-choice movement was recently on the rise in the USA, and as a student, everyone was picking sides. The pro-life movement, which as the name suggests, is to save lives and raise awareness, made more sense to me than the chosen one. I mean, yes, you should have the right yourself, but when your action harms someone else's life, you should be responsible for that. The thing that most confused me about the choice movement was if a father kills the child without the mother's consent, then they scream that it's murder. But when the role is reversed, they scream it's my body, my choice. I didn't get the logic behind this. Whatever the case, I was on the side of saving the life, which was an individual, so I picked the side that modern feminism opposed. Besides the fact that I attended a pro-life seminar at the university and openly supported them, I had a personal life as well, where I was socializing among my friends and trying to date. I installed Hinge after taking a suggestion from my friend Finn and created a profile for myself. Judging by the information I had put about myself, there were very few matches for me, but none of them were the kind of girls with whom I would want to have a long-term relationship, and I wasn't looking for a fling or one-time thing. I know, it must be hard to hear from a guy, but I would very much like to have one girl for life and be romantically engaged with her. At last, I matched with a girl named Iris who seemed to have similar interests as me, so the two of us ended up talking among one another and swapped numbers. Her tone was soft and polite, it just melted on my ears like a cool, relaxing breeze. After a few brief conversations, she asked if I wanted to meet, and we decided to meet at a cafe around 4 p.m. The movement she walked in that peach dress that went below her knees covering her entire skin, and her brown hair tied in a long braided skin allowing full access to her round yet small face. Her big almond eyes, cute nose, and sharp lips that had formed into a polite smile were just perfect. She looked gorgeous and cute at the same time. Where men love to see a woman in sexy, slutty clothes, most men would prefer a simple woman who tries to hide their skin from other men over the girls everyone has seen. Well, for one, I am liking that. And then again, I did mention being born in the wrong generation, so maybe it's just me. We started with the introduction, and then moved on to exchange information about family, hobbies, etc. She mentioned her love for reading and writing. Literature was something she found fascinating, and her hobby was sketching. Every little detail she shared about her felt fascinating to me, and I was eager to hear more of her soothing voice, but she excused herself to the bathroom. As I was waiting for her, a group of girls with rather colorful hair than normal entered the cafe laughing. I guess by their t-shirts that they were protesting somewhere for pro-choice. I cared less about them than the dirty cup on the next empty table, so I continued waiting for Iris when I felt a tap on my shoulder. Yes? I asked as I turned to meet the eyes of a pink-haired girl. Hi, you look cute to me, so can I have your number? The moment her cringe-weird tone hit my ears, I was ready to throw up on an empty stomach. I'm sorry, not interested. After saying this politely, I turned around. But instead of giving up, she came and sat in front of me, making me stand as a result. Rude? 
Are you here on a date? I'm sure I'm more attractive than the chick on the wait. So, how about you ditch her and have fun with me? She came closer and attempted to flirt with me while maintaining her cringeworthy tone. I backed away a few steps away from her, and my expression showed clear signs of disgust. But even then, she didn't leave. What is your problem? Can't you hear me saying a clear no? When she did not understand my resisting approach, I had no other choice but to scream. As you can imagine, it gained a little attention, and a few people gathered, including the girl's friends who were on the counter. She felt humiliated, so she shouted that I was trying to touch her inappropriately. And when she rejected, I tried to force her. And as we all know, whenever a girl says something like this, most people tend to believe her rather than a guy who seems much bigger than her. Why are you lying when it was you making advances towards me? I asked, but she started shouting at me. And her friends, despite knowing the truth, started to say that they saw me doing whatever she was claiming I did. There were a few dudes who came forward to help the little damsel in distress and were like, you think you're tough harassing a girl in public, bruh? Along with a few cuss words, MFR, etc. I fired back by saying that she was lying, but who would believe me in such a situation as the crowd started to threaten me? I saw a single smirk forming her lips and then disappeared as soon as I noticed. That was the most eye-watering, terrifying moment of my life as I realized that I was getting accused of something like that. Just as I was about to lose all hope, I noticed Iris walking inside the crowd and asking loudly what was going on. I thought that was it. I was not going to be badly humiliated for something that was completely innocent of, but the girl I was immensely attracted to was going to think I was some kind of pervert. The pink-haired girl shamelessly drew out crocodile tears and repeated the lies she had been telling for the past 10 minutes to these people. As Iris's lips formed a soft smile, I got confused and scared at the same moment. But then she said something that dropped everyone's jaw literally. I have been standing there for the past 20 minutes and have not just seen, but recorded everything. Now, do you want me to humiliate you by exposing your lie over the internet in front of the entire world making you lose your face, or are you going to apologize for the man you wrongfully accused? Those girls' jaws dropped after listening to her words. Everyone else was at first mesmerized by her soft feminine voice for a few seconds, and then they were like, what? She was lying the entire time? Tick tock, the clock is ticking. I don't have much patience. I can just press post this video right now, she threatened in her polite voice. Wait, I'm sorry I lied. I was the one who came onto you first. As these words came out of that pink haired girl, people started to gossip about her, but she couldn't withstand staying there, so they all rushed out. Those who were saying badly about me earlier apologized and went back to wherever they were before. Thank you for standing up for me and recording that, I said. Believe me, the moment she pulled Una reverse card on them, I was ready to cry as I imagined telling my future children, that's how I met your mother. Wanna know a secret? She whispered in my ears, making me blush. I nodded. I didn't record anything. I was just bluffing the entire time. I got out of the washroom five minutes before that. As she said that, I jolted my head toward her to see her smile, which made my heart thump even louder. But how did you know they were lying? I looked at her in confusion. I'm a good judge of character. I could tell that you're not that kind of person. She said calmly while sipping her coffee. And trust me, I couldn't help a few teardrops falling down my cheeks. I was sure as hell going to tell this to our future kids, I thought as I smiled back at her while grabbing my cup. Spoiler alert, I did end up marrying her in the end. Hey guys, thanks so much for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. I can put anything in her feet. All she has to do is say the word. But that's the problem. She doesn't say anything. Well, I can't blame her for that either. It's not like it's her fault or something. After all, I'm the reason she's like this. She is my girlfriend, and I love her more than anything or anyone in this life, so I have decided to never let her go. Let's start this story from the very beginning, from the day I first met the love of my life, Ava Lambert. It was the weekend, and my friends and I decided to watch a movie. 
As we were heading towards the hall, someone bumped into me. I turned around to see this tall, slim, gorgeous girl who was wearing a blank knee-length dress. Her black, long, curly hair was bouncing from her shoulder to the back. Her ocean blue eyes were looking in mine, and her trembling, rosy lips were saying something. I guess she must be apologizing for bumping into me, but I couldn't hear since my entire focus was staring and appreciating her beauty by my eyes. As I was mesmerized by her, she waved her hands in front of my face and said, Hello? Excuse me, are you listening? I came back to my senses, and she told me that she was apologizing for bumping into me. It's okay, you don't need to apologize, and it's not like I got hurt or something. I laughed while saying, and she looked relieved by my answer. She immediately said bye and left. I kept staring at her back while she was walking away. Excuse me, would you mind giving me your number? I acted on my impulse and asked her. She turned around and gave me a beautiful smile and said, I don't share my number with strangers. Frederick, my name is Frederick Ackerman. Now we are not strangers anymore, I replied, giving her a big ol' smile. If we meet again someday, and I will consider it, she chuckled while saying and walking out. I was dazed, but then one of my friends called me over. I went inside the movie hall and we sat in the top last row. The movie started and everyone started enjoying it, except for me. I wasn't able to focus on the movie at all. Instead, I was thinking of her the entire time. Her melodious voice was ringing in my ears. How should I meet her again? That's what I was thinking. I felt like she had given me a challenge which I must overcome in order to get to know her. The next few days, I came here every evening just to see if she is here or not, and whenever I went, my eyes only searched for her. When even after 15 days I did not see her, I was feeling utterly disappointed. When out of the blue, there she was coming out of the gym with her friends, talking and laughing. The feeling I had was like I had just won the world. I slowly approached her. She looked at me with confusion and making a face which clearly said that she was trying to remember who I was, which made me feel a bit bad because I felt like I was the only one who was so much bothered by her. Remember, you told me that you would give me your number if we meet again. Her expression changed and she had recognized me now. Her lips formed into a charming smile and she gave me her number. Trust me when I say this, but I was over the moon. I texted her as soon as I reached home, and she replied within 15 minutes. We started talking over calls and messages after that day. I found out she ended her last relationship almost six months ago, and she is currently single. Duration of our conversations gradually increased, and one day, I finally asked her out. Do you want a date? I asked her because I was sure that I had fallen madly in love with her. I can only date if it's not something serious, because I'm not looking for getting into a serious relationship right now, she said to me. And I agreed at the time, because I was confident that I would make her fall in love with me. And that's how I got into the relationship with her. The more I got to know her, the more I was crazy about her. But I also felt that her friends were getting in the way of our relationship, and she spent more time with them than her boyfriend. So one day, I decided to talk to her about this because it was bothering me so much. And one day when she came over, I finally asked her when we were having some pasta, Ava, don't you think you spend way more time with your friends than you do with me? She looked at me with confusion as if I had asked her something that I shouldn't have. Isn't our relationship just a fling? Don't get too worked up over it, Frederick, she laughed and continued eating her pasta. I know I agreed over that when we first started going out, but I couldn't believe she was still fixated over that. It simply pissed me off and I started shouting at her. Are you being serious right now? Fling or not, I'm still your boyfriend and you dare spend your time over your mere friends than me. As I was saying all this, I noticed her expression forming into disgust, and I immediately apologized, saying that I was stressed over work, that's why I shouted, and I would never do that. It was better for me to keep my cool if I did not want to lose her. 
As she stood up to leave, she turned toward me and said, Frederick, I think it would be better if we break up now. I know you started to have feelings for me, and I don't feel the same way as you. So it would be better if we end it before it's too late. I could not understand what I did wrong. I did everything she asked me to, then why was she saying something so horrible as to leave me? I couldn't think straight, and my hands automatically moved, grabbing her hair and pulling her towards me. And I kissed her forcefully while she kept struggling to get away from my grip, but I continued kissing her. It was the first time in our relationship that I had kissed her for so long, and it felt good. As I pulled my lips away from her, she started pleading me to let her go and saying stuff like she doesn't want to be with me anymore. It put fuel in my anger, so I picked her up and took her to my bedroom. I threw her over the bed and got on top of her, but she continued her attempts to free herself from me. She was still screaming and saying horrible stuff like she would run away as soon as she gets a chance or she will report me to the police if I did something to her. I laughed loudly and came closer to her ears. You know my house is away from city and people, so you can scream all you want, but no one will be able to hear it. I whispered and started to rip her clothes one by one. Her screams only made me more eager to shut her up. I tied her hands to the bed from her own clothes and started to kiss all over her body. Every time my lips touched her skin, I felt more and more turned on. I made love to her over and over again for the entire night. Every time she passed out from the unbearable pain she was feeling. I was finished with her by the morning and she was still unconscious. Her messy hair, naked body covered with my bite marks looked even more gorgeous than ever. I went to the bathroom and when I got back, she wasn't there, which made me extremely furious. I knew she couldn't have gone too far, so I ran after her. I looked everywhere and finally found her hiding near a bench, naked, trembling, and scared like a freaking cat. I pulled her up and took her inside, and as soon as we got inside, I started hitting her. And I finally stopped after beating her until I was satisfied. That was when I realized I'd broken her legs. It made my heart ache looking at her in this condition, but it was only her fault for asking to leave me. She was uttering something which I couldn't understand, so I put my ear closer to her mouth. I have to run away from him, she was mumbling to herself. Why hasn't she fallen in love with me? I would give everything she wants if she does. In a fit of rage, I got up and grabbed a sharp knife. After that, I went closer to her and slit her tongue so that she can never talk about leaving me again. This took place maybe around the age of 13. Let me set the scene. I had my first serious boyfriend, Sam. Sam was a nerdy kind of guy. We had met at church. When he had asked me out, I was over the moon as another girl had been talking to him at the same time. I was flattered that he had chosen me. At the point in time this story takes place, I was having a lot of issues at home. I had attempted to take my life during my relationship and had a lot of issues with self-harm. My relationship with my parents was terrible, still is. That probably explains why I never told them any of this. Besides my personal problems, I'd say the relationship was running smoothly until Sam came into contact with Allison. I don't recall exactly when or where Sam met Allison. I believe it was at his air cadets. It's almost like she just appeared. Whenever Sam and I were going through a rough patch, he would talk to Allison and she would console him. It made me really uncomfortable at the time being a jealous 13 year old. Our key communication was over Skype as he lived a good 40 minutes away from me. On average, I saw him twice a week once on a Saturday in which I would catch two buses to his home, the second being at church on a Sunday. He would often tell me stories about his long conversations with Allison, how she was hilarious, but she didn't like me, although I had never spoken to her myself. I assume this was due to him mainly speaking to her during our childish arguments. I first came into contact with Allison during an argument with Sam. 
We were bickering about something unimportant and a message popped up on my Skype. It was from Allison. I don't recall what exactly the message said as this was in 2014, but I tried to gain access to my old Skype to go through the messages but have not been able to. But I do remember her insulting me repeatedly and saying I didn't deserve Sam and I should have died in regards to ending my life. I responded harshly, telling her to screw off or something of the sorts. Was it polite? No. I was extremely standoffish at this age. My response seemed to anger her. I was bombarded with call after call. I declined every single one. I reported to Sam what had gone on and he said he had told her to leave me alone. All was good for a while. This didn't affect me too much. This was semi-normal for me as high school relationship drama was almost an everyday occurrence at my school. Looking back on it, Sam was almost definitely cheating on me, but I was too naive and in childish love to care. My second incident with Allison was on a summer afternoon. I was relaxing on Sam's bed after an afternoon of messing around. He had gone to complete a chore in the kitchen and had left his computer on. I decided to check my Facebook and went to log in. On the screen was a chat with Allison. Being curious, I scrolled through the chat. I was greeted with an onslaught of naked images of her. This started a huge fight, as you can imagine. Sam said that she was just a jealous stalker girl. My third interaction with Allison was at my local library. Allison must have been 16 as she was completing some work experience at the time. I have and still am an avid book reader. I was there with my mother and sister when I saw her at the counter. She stared me down and it took me aback as I didn't recognize her to begin with. It then clicked. I was more annoyed than anything. I didn't pick up a book instead of opting to hang around my sister as she checked some books. Allison's eyes never left me. The time came to leave as mum was renting the books out, she made small talk with Allison. I was surprised at how polite and well-mannered she was in comparison to the girl who had messaged me. I began to feel guilty for the way I had responded to her. Once at home, I hopped on my phone and wrote a message to her, apologizing for the way I had spoken to her. The message I received back from her was a different tone altogether. She started listing all these terrible names. She said I had no right to date Sam, and all I brought him was misery. This time her words really did affect me. I called Sam and begged him to never contact her again. I remember vividly sobbing and crying for hours. This happened a couple more times each time escalating in severity. Threats to beat my lights out were sent. My mental health was greatly affected. I wasn't afraid of her but more upset at the things she said. I never took a single threat seriously. To this day I have no idea why Sam stayed in contact with her and I began to avoid the library. My relationship with Sam continued. One day I got into a large argument with my mother and called Sam sobbing. He consoled me and told me it was going to be alright. Impulsively I decided to go for a run, leaving my phone at home. I wanted to be out of the home. I was gone for maybe an hour or two. I returned home to an onslaught of messages from Sam deeply concerned for my well-being. I apologized and explained the situation, a reminder this entire time that I had not blocked Allison. She messaged me with the usual drivel. I was so used to her threats at this point it hardly fazed me. The same threat happened again. I'll beat your lights out. Calling her bluff, I replied, Well, go on then. You don't even know where I live. She replied with my address, and my heart skipped a beat. All the threats of violence were all too real now. I remember shaking uncontrollably. I sobbed down the phone to Sam. I begged him to block her and never to speak to her again. He continued to speak to her, although I never did. New girls appeared in her place, but none were as invasive as her. We ended the relationship after a year and a bit. In one of the messages I sent to him regarding our breakup, I spoke about Allison and his stalker girls. It's been a long time since then. Sam and I occasionally speak and I'd say we are on good terms. He's in a band and I'm studying still. At the time I didn't realize the severity of her actions. 
The fact that she had gone onto the computer base at my library and searched for my address didn't pass my mind until many years later. It still sends shivers down my spine. What would she have been actually capable of doing, I'll never know. I truly hope no one finds out. I tried finding her online out of curiosity to no avail. If she was capable of that amount of calculation at 16 years old, I wonder what she was capable of now. I hope this serves as a word of warning to parents to look out for their kids. I know this story may not be as severe as many on the subreddit, but I thought I'd share this terrifying tale.